Mark, just want to get your take on the, the third quarter in particular, the, the 21-0 run, and maybe just the, the myriad of factors that went into that. I didn't know it was 21-0, but uh, stops, you know, get out and run, play with great flow, thought the ball really moved. Um, five guys working to get a good shot. Uh, but the defense was definitely um, what the catalyst was there, I think. How about Mike's impact giving you the, the verticality and rim protection, but also he seemed to draw Zubats out, and, and that maybe led to some open drives and layups for you all too? Yeah, I thought that was effective. Um, yeah, he does that, though, with his shooting gravity. And defensively, that's the most underrated thing about him. You know, I think he gets labeled as a shooter because he's a great shooter, but he's a great player. You know, he's got a very complete game. He's a great drop defender despite not being a vertical player. Um, he's just got unbelievable feel and fundamentals for it after a long time, and it's, it's actually helped us as a coaching staff teach it to Jalen Williams, and it gives us confidence that a guy like Jalen Williams can get really good at those skills because he's – smart and he's tough um he's not a, a vertical athlete but neither is mike you know and um he, he's a hell of a player paris lawson okc com. wanted to talk to you about that defense i mean you had three charges drawn in that first half and then you finished with eight blocks 12 steals just what was the most encouraging thing about the defensive end for you guys tonight um i just think that first of all the carryover and bounce back from um whenever we played last sunday um uh, that we definitely didn't have the thrust on the ball that um, we needed to have on Sunday, and I thought the carry over there. I mean, that's that's a fundamental that's just going to be so relevant for us all season, you know, for the, till the end of time. So um, I thought that was the most impressive thing was just how tough we were an individual D. That was a huge key tonight. Yeah, uh, Cliff Brun, Associated Press. Um, I noticed Shea Gilgis Alexander took 19 shots before even taking the three pointer. Uh, was that what you wanted from him? And in addition to that, how difficult is it for a guy that you know can make threes to be disciplined enough to not force them? Uh, he definitely wasn't forcing tonight. He was at his own pace. I don't really, I don't tell him anything, to be honest with you, other than process-oriented stuff, you know, speed of play, inside the actions, up the floor. Um, but with guys that have great instincts, you know, you can overcoach them and really mess them up. So I, I let him make those decisions. Mark, you started uh, Muscala to start the second half. That goes back to the unconventionality, changing up the starting lineup each half. What what leads you to make a decision, and particularly tonight? Um, well, they they subbed him. They subbed Zubak out the minute we put Mike in in the first half, and I thought that was a tip that you know they didn't want Zubak out there, and I knew they'd start him in the second half, so I just did it. Joe Masato, the Oklahoman. Um, Mark Trey had that really impressive sequence there in the second quarter um, where he flew in for the offensive rebound, saved the ball from getting out of bounds. Shea kicks it to him for the three. Just what have you seen in in his effort, uh, you know, in, in those effort type plays and defense? He took a pair of charges tonight. Um, Trey Mann. Yeah, Trey Mann. Yeah, sorry. I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I don't, I'm not a big background noise guy so, other than like music. Yeah. You know? Like when I watch film, I listen to music, and it's really just a drown. I'm not listening to music; it's, it's to drown out background the background noise. noise. So I can't focus with background no. noise. It's a problem. What the hell are you talking about? So, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Sure, I'm just kidding. Sure. I got it. Trey Man, Trey Man defense. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, I thought you know he started against Russell uh, against Minnesota on Sunday, and uh, was not where he needs to be. And he's he's capable of being much better than that. And so. We challenged him again, you know, the whole team, individual D, but if he's going to take some starting minutes or if he's going to close games or, you know, if we're going to have him out there with really good teams, he's got to be able to handle those matchups, and I thought he did a really good job of that tonight. There, there were some weird numbers in this one. Just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Turnover count, uh, they had 18. You only had five, and yep. points off turnovers was 23-3. to three. Just how big was that? It was huge, and obviously we didn't shoot the ball very well tonight from three, and I thought the combination of our defense – ball control with the turnovers and offensive rebounding was what offset, you know, obviously a really bad shooting night uh, from three. And so it just goes to show that there's enough controllables in the game that um, you can win by however many points we won by, you know, on a really tough shooting night. Andrew Schlecht of The Athletic, Aaron Wiggins had a double-double tonight, played multiple positions. What have you seen from him through these first few games and through camp? Um, 
I mean, he's a solid player uh, that I think has a very clear identity. Um, he, when he plays to that identity, is like highly effective as a functional two-way player. You know, he plays defense and he plays offense. I thought he did a really good job. I mean, we went with him down the stretch over Dort, which, I mean, Dort was an animal defensively tonight. We were plus 25 when he was on the court. Um, and the fact that we have the confidence in Aaron um, down the stretch of the game, the group is going pretty good. And the fact that we have the confidence in him to do that, um, you know, is pretty impressive. You know, he's, he's grown to that point. He's a good player. You had some kind of unconventional substitution patterns, especially with Poku. What what are you looking for in those kind of spurts? For um, I mean, a lot of it is just reading the game. Um, tonight, a lot of it was lineup based. They're very different when Zubox on the court uh, versus when he's not. In terms of you know what coverages they you know he plays and that sort of thing. Um, so a lot of it is like not necessarily an indictment on the individual substitution, but it's like how you're altering the chemistry of the game, uh, what your opponent's doing, what we're doing, um, you know, including the halftime sub. You know, it's just, I mean, Robinson Earl didn't start the second half. It had nothing to do with Robinson Earl. It had everything to do with Zubak, you know. So um, a lot of it's to do with that. And the guys, like I said, they have to uh, adapt and they have to stay ready. I'm confident they will. I thought he played pretty well tonight, though. I trusted everybody that was out there tonight. And then how do you how do you see Shea just impacting the whole group? The the group just seemed more at ease tonight than they did the other night. What, what are you seeing? Um, I wouldn't. It's correlation, not causation. I'd be careful to make that conclusion just because of him playing. But um, I mean, he has an unbelievable tempo, you know. And I thought he was in some groove tonight from the jump. Um, I thought he had a really good balance of um, you know attacking, knowing when to fight another possession. Um, I thought he was pretty good defensively again. Um, you know, he obviously really helps us when he's in. And was his pacing where you wanted it to be? Tonight? Most possessions. I mean, it's there, he's got the ball a lot. Trey's got the ball a lot. There's definitely plays. Dort, you know, like these guys are, you know, they're out there a long time and they have the ball. And, you know, they're going to have some that are really, really good and they're going to have some that are okay and some that they need to improve. And we just have to continue to give them the feedback. They need to continue to work on it. Um, but for the most part tonight, he was on it. You mentioned Shea's defense uh, tonight and the other night. He had three blocks, three steals tonight. What are some of the specific areas? I know it's just a few games, but he's improved that on that end. Um, I think his overall engagement, um, I think his um, his sense of purpose on that end. You know, he's 6'6". He's got long arms. He's gotten stronger every single year. He looks great physically. Um, it's really just like... The engagement of understanding, you know, the sense of purpose on that end, and and being a tone setter on that end. He's never been bad. Um, in fact, the, his first year with us, when we had Chris and Dennis Schroeder, he guarded bigger guys all the time. When we had all three of those guys out there together, um, but you know, he he's serious about leading, and um, every guy is getting pushed right now um, to evolve because the team's evolving, and every single guy is getting pushed to evolve, and what they're being asked to do is difficult and what he's being asked to do is difficult we're asking him to be a tone setter defensively he's one of the best offensive players in the league and we're asking him to set a tone defensively we're asking dort to evolve you know and that's difficult a lot his struggles right now some of that is me some of that is how he's getting coached right now but it's an investment in the evolution of the team um basically the other night you know, we're asking Baisley to evolve. We're asking Giddy to evolve. And evolution is hard. Like, you got to work harder. But we're not settling for where we are at this particular point in time. We're trying to invest in a team that's evolving. And we want our players to evolve with it and be the leaders of that evolution. And Shea's defense is just one example of that. Daniel Bell, BSO. Um, 70 shots in the paint tonight, which is 32 more than the most from the previous few games. I know you played against the Wolves, who have the new look Twin Towers. But... Was it more of a concerted effort, or was it just taking what they gave you? Some of that's, you know, the Zubak factor, you know, like putting lineups out there that draw him away from the basket, which, you know, he's either got to play a different coverage or he's got to guard a perimeter player. I thought that helped us tonight. Um, and then the other one is, I think, our switch attacks. We talked before the game. We're going to get switched a lot. They're a really, really good switch team. And if you are slow against them in your actions or with ball movement, you can get really stuck. And I thought we did a pretty good job for the most part tonight of moving them around with the actions and with the ball movement and it gave us some cracks.
Derek Parker, Inside the Thunder. Lou Dort has really struggled to score the ball in these four games. It doesn't look like it's lack of confidence, but what do you attribute that to so far? A lot of me, like I just said. You know, like we're we're asking, um, we're putting a lot on these guys' plates, you know, and uh, I've got a lot on his plate right now, um, and I'll take it squarely on the, on the chin, um, but it's in the name of investing in him as a player, and investing more importantly in him as a player for this team moving forward. We just signed him to a long-term contract. We're expecting him to be here. And, you know, we want him to continue to evolve. He's a young player that can still improve. And sometimes you have to take a step backward to take two steps forward. And that's the process that we're in with the whole team right now is, you know, challenging them and having a really, really high bar for the team and for individual people. And it's in the name of evolution. It's in the name of growth. And uh, sometimes growth is painful. Um, but we're pushing the team really hard. And they're to their credit, and Lou is no better example than this, they're doing an unbelievable job of taking that and being committed to it. We're, we're just like robotic about feedback and, you know, you're going to play the 48 and the game's going to give you the feedback. It's our job to package that as best we can for the team so they can learn and grow from it. Um, and we just try to create like an extremely, you know, ruthless consistency with our approach and just trust that if we do that, the guys will improve the players will grow as they gain experience. Things will slow down. Their bodies will get stronger. And we just trust in that, that deal and repeating that, like I said, ruthlessly. Um, and when the outcomes start to come, that's when your habits are more important because if you're winning some games, that's when you could take your eye off the ball. And so um, we're just trying to establish like a very consistent environment that has high standards that are controllable for the players. Uh, and whatever the outcomes are as a result of that, that's what they are.